Hey guys, so I haven't had a story about a kobold in a while, so we thought we'd rally one up for you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell while you're there. Wash your hands, wash your balls. See you at the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, <laughs> I think I've played two no characters and about four kobolds. I'm still playing one of the kobolds. Lots of shit went down last session. Interested? It involves an umbrella, a magical artifact, 400 square feet of water, and a civil war. I guess I'll start telling that story. My character is Trinket, a kobold wizard who educates himself with books in an abandoned tower near the Warrens where he grew up and used the magic contained therein to make his tribe into a powerful and civilized people in the Northern Highlands. Eager to learn more of the world beyond, he set out as an adventurer. Taking a coat and an umbrella from the tower, the latter of which was the correct proportions for use as a staff. How are we <laughs> Only we small things, aren't they? <laughs> small boy. Trinket set off to find his fortune. The campaign began in a small human settlement in the Snowy Highlands, where all the characters had gathered for the upcoming winter festival of Bahamut. The first session was not important to this story. All you need to know is that a small undead army attacked the village that night. We repelled them, though they abducted a few villagers. Following the tracks through the woods, we came to a cave where we discovered the dead villagers and a small cult of Vecna. After a long battle, we emerged with an old magical amulet of an evil persuasion and a tomb titled the Book of Vecna. The amulet itself seemed to portray an eye inset in a hand. Over the next few days, Trinket would be left responsible for protecting the item and the eye would begin to bulge out and start talking to him. I haven't tried talking back yet or implanting it in my head but it is probably exactly what I think it is. We travelled by merchant caravan to the capital city of the country. We were in a large, bustling metropolis of white stone that was divided into several districts. The Wizard University campus, the old city, housing a temple of Bahamut, the royal district, the merchant district, the civilian district, and the military district. A great river ran through the middle of the city, bisecting it in two. The party, consisting of a smartly dressed warforged artificer, a shifter ranger and her rogue brother, a minotaur paladin of Bahamut and myself, split up at this point. The majority of the party went to the merchant district, while the artificer and I went to the tower within the wizard university where the archmage resided. After an exhaustingly long climb, we noted a permanent teleport circle present in the room before receiving an audience with the Archmaid. We explained how we had encountered the cult and asked him to disenchant the dark enchanted weapons we had collected. Trinket also took the amulet from its pouch and asked if the Archmaid recognised it. Immediately snatching it from Trinket's grasp, the Archmaid demanded to know where we had found it. Kobold instincts kicking in, Trinket immediately snatched back the shiny object. A moment of tense silence passed before the Archmaid demanded we leave his ward immediately. Eight the fuck? Eight! No! <laughs> a quick diplomacy roll allowed us a day to use the university's renowned library, which we had also sought. Trinket spent a few hours researching the history of Vecna, his attempted invasion of Sigil, and subsequent imprisonment and escape, but found no information concerning the amulet, or where Vecna currently dwelled. He did, however, memorise a few rituals involving portals which would come into use later. Trinket went to find his friends in the merchant ward. While traversing the streets, he spotted an adventuring equipment shop and entered. As expected, the rogue was inside looking shifty and eyeing some lockpicking tools. It was at this moment that Trinket spotted a line of handy haversacks and bags of holding on the top shelf. Now, I had made Trinket neutral good, but at this point in the campaign, we were all discovering how we wanted to play our character. Incidentally, one of my long-term plans for the campaign has been to attach a bag of holding or handy haversack to the inside of the umbrella and use it to carry things around and shelter inside, as well as being a magical staff and personal weather-proofing device. I checked Trinket's wealth. We had been pretty lucky the previous session, but he still had not nearly enough money for one of these items. So the rogue and I passed some notes and hatched a cunning plan. Trinket took the shopkeeper into the storage room to discuss the purchase of rope in bulk and began to drone on and on about shipping costs and the tax deductible transaction fees and other nonsense. At the same time, I informed the GM that Trinket was casting sleep on the shopkeeper, making the necessary hand gestures behind his back. 
A few moments passed and the shopkeeper grew drowsier and drowsier, eventually passing out in a pile of candles. Trinket calmly stepped back into the shop, locked the door and proceeded to assist the rogue, chaotic neutral unsurprisingly, in cramming everything we could grab into Trinket's new handy haversack, <laughs> including the other four handy haversacks themselves. We were scarcely done hiding the practically weightless woven object into the umbrella when we spotted a familiar horned face at the window. The lawful good Minotaur Paladin had seen everything. Oh no. <laughs> and was now running down the street calling for the guards. Oh no, he couldn't be. Tight, doing that. tight, tight. Tight, tight. Like, you know, see, see paladins that get on like that. It's a fuck, <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, I know, like, oh yeah, you gotta act all and shit from time to time. But, like, you know. It's you your know, adventure party. Do, can, can the gods not turn a blind eye from time to time? <laughs> you know? Trinket and the rogue sprinted in the other direction. A large black umbrella under Trinket's arm, charging through the twisting streets trying to evade the guards. As we passed over a bridge above the river that ran through the town, an idea struck me. I instructed the rogue to climb into the handy haversack, sitting inside the umbrella. He reluctantly obliged, landing awkwardly on a pile of adventurous kits that laid inside. Trinket then opened up the umbrella, handle pointing in the air, and jumped into the river lowering his legs into the umbrella's magical depth and keeping the handle pointing up with his hands. Their combined weight negated to five pounds. The umbrella sailed gently down the river while its occupants cackled manically and the paladin and town guards looked on, dumbstruck. We drifted beyond the boundaries of the city into the relative safety of the swampland beyond. The DM politely informed me that I would have to change my alignment to chaotic good and I understandingly obliged. We stashed the adventurer's kits under a tree and sat a while in thought. From what I could gather from the characters round the table, the paladin had instructed the town guards to arrest the rest of the party for further question. Trinket may now be chaotic, but he was still good at heart and insisted to the rogue that they would go back and save the others. So we hatched another cunning plan. Ooh. After perhaps a whole hour of debate and strategizing between me and the rogue, we had been moved into the other room, away from the rest of the party. We finalised the plan that would allow us to reclaim our friends, clear our names and still allow us to keep the loot. It commenced when a flash of light from the teleport circle in the Archmage's tower startled the Archmage as Trinket and the rogue tumbled through. Trinket had used the rituals gathered from the library to bypass any guards in the streets and appear directly within the Archmage's chamber itself. We hurriedly explained that the military district had been taken under control by the cult of Vecna upon discovering the amulet we carried. They captured our comrades and attempted to murder us to recover the artifact. A favourable bluff roll, enhanced by the proof of the amulet, seemed to act as a promise of support in an attempt to seize control of the military districts. With the help of the university's magic, we then slipped into the royal district unseen and broke into the Duke's manor. We quickly explained our situation in the same manner we tricked the Archmage in and soon had his support in a takeover of the military district. We now had the wizard and the royal guard on our side. We had some, but we knew we still needed the support of the other great power in the city, the Church of Bahamut, within the old city district. The church was a major power in what was a very religious city, a power even greater than the aristocracy of the royal district. They could very well end the uprising before it had a chance to begin. We once more went on the move and within the hour reached the great gates of the Church of Bahamut. We entered and our old friend the Minotaur Paladin rose from in front of the altar to face us. He looked at us, stony faced, his hand reaching for his sword. Trinket smiled and nodded at him, acknowledgingly. A small detail I forgot to mention, Trinket left a note in the counter at the shop before he fled. I owe you one store. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, you know, we do, look, we fully intend on paying them back at Sometime. some stage. <laughs> Just, look, we need it now and don't worry yeah. about it, alright? I had built Trinket to be as knowledgeable as I could. He was well read in history, dungeoneering, arcana and even religion. His religion skill was higher, in fact, than the paladins. Yeah, well, you see, I fall under that problem because I'm currently playing a paladin, and um, you're not religious. 
Yeah, it's not a very religious paladin, sadly. <laughs> but um, no, the problem is I've only got like I've got ten in time. So I think I, I, I was able to put two points in the religion. I can't remember exactly, but like you know, I kind of felt like I really should have something. Some. <laughs> I really should have something in religion at the very least. You know what I mean? But you know, like it's a dumb stat for paladins. It only makes them to take intelligence yeah. all the time. So yeah. So. Knowing that violence was forbidden within the sacred walls of the church, Trinket cheerily wandered past the paladin, who looked on in confusion, before I broke the news to him. He couldn't touch us in here. I would understand if you thought I hadn't been living up to my alignment of chaotic good much thus far. But believe it or not, Trinket had the best intentions. He fully intended to rescue his friends and reintegrate the paladin into the party without killing him. No, 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 no. You can't have some weak dirty wee type in the party that got ate the fog. <laughs> or turning him against his church and making him fall. Despite the rogue's insistence that he would just be as useful as a fighter as he would as a paladin. So when Trinket explained to the ex arch of Bahamut the grave threat to the stability of the city the nation and the church that the cult infiltrating the military district presented. The paladin suddenly realised the true beauty of my plan. The paladin would not only be forbidden by his church to stop me, but would be obligated to assist me. The paladin took me aside and asked if I was really willing to cause such bloodshed for stolen goods. I told him that if my plan came into fruition, not a drop of blood would be spilt, putting his trust in his small, Willy, f- Willy friend? What? Okay. Wiley? Willy? <laughs> Willy friend? Uh, Small li- That's a bit of a fucking insult. Alright, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he got, he, he, couple got a little dick. <laughs> Y'all got a little Willy? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. I don't know what he was trying to I say. I don't know. There. Wiley? 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 Is Wiley even? not. I don't w- know. I, uh, I don't know. Look, we thought that was Willy. Willy. Right? It, it is right? Willy. Like Doss as well. It went to know a double L as well. Eh? Still looks like Willy. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep a going. small Willy friend. The paladin endorsed the story. With the testimony of one of his own, the ex-arch of Bahamut endorsed the takeover. And so the paladins and clerics of Bahamut were on our side. We were ready. The rogue, the paladin and trinket raced towards the military district. The guards were alert, but seeing us in the company of our pursuer, presumed we had been captured. Rumour was that the corruption in the other wards was going to lead to an attack on the military district, and the town guard were ready for it. Using his kobold nimbleness, Trinket scaled the face of a building and perched himself in the red tiles. He sat against the metal spire at the centre of the roof and observed the scene below. He could see the paladin and the rogue leaving the jailhouse. The apparently released ranger and artificer with them. The sun was beginning to set, but through the orange haze of the sky, he could see a makeshift army of wizards, knights, paladins and clerics marching towards the border of the military district. He waited until his friends were ready in the window below him and took a handy haversack out of his newly magical sewn handy umbrella. (laughs) He gripped the handle of the umbrella and lowered it for the party members to climb into. And once they had disappeared within, he took the other haversack in hand, reaching in to ensure the other three haversacks were properly aligned within. He stood up and pierced them atop the tar's metal spar. A handy haversack can hold a hundred cubic feet of content. When a handy haversack is pierced, the enchantment is broken, and the handy haversack immediately expels its contents. Oh Jesus, it's a fucking catapult. Oh God. While the plan was being formulated, These four handy haversacks sitting inside one another had been left in the path of the river for several hours until full. 400 cubic feet of water, that is 11,327 litres of water, presently exploded from the top of the tower and went thundering down to the streets below. And Trinket rode atop of it, sailing an umbrella down an explosive avalanche of water, which was heading towards the site of the upcoming conflict and laughing like a maniac. I can't help but think of, do you remember that horrible, horrible Pierce Brosnan one? Oh, of him, like, like, with the glider? Yeah. You know what I'm on about? Like, uh, day to die or something, I can't remember. It was like, it was the last Pierce Brosnan one. And be honest with you, I was very happy that that was the last Pierce Brosnan one after that. It was fucking horrible. (laughs) The military district was completely flooded by a raging torrent of water. 
The downpour occurred far enough from the battlegrounds that nobody was crushed by the initial explosion of moisture. Oh. But Moist. guard <laughs> but guard, knight, wizard, paladin and cleric alike were helplessly tossed around by the wave in confusion and panic. While Trinket steered the umbrella and the rather uncomfortable party within it down the river and out of the city once more, now whole again and ready to continue on their way. When the district drained, no fatalities were found. Many buildings were damaged, but the water wasn't deep enough to drown any of the combatants, nor did it even approach the civilian district. The news spread that no cultists were found in the district, having presumably fled during the panic. In the ensuing days, the city would prepare for more insurgents by the cult of Vecna, and would spread the message about the entire kingdom to be on constant watch for the machinations of the cult. Trinket robbed a store blind, invaded the guard, framed the military for corruption, started a civil conflict, flooded the city, earned an exciting new umbrella, and raised nigh continental awareness of the cult of Vecna and its return. The party are continuing to look for evidence of the cult's activities, and Trinket is looking to get his handy umbrella staff enchanted with feather fall next. Oh, bitch, that's actually really good, I like that. <laughs> he remains chaotic good. You know, there's something about people that play kobolds. I don't know why I find them funny. I love kobolds. I do like kobolds. There's something oddly, they're so shit here, but they're so fun at the same time. I love kobolds. Yeah, like, you know, like, see, you, you, when you think about it, it's like, if you're going to do that, why not just play a dragonborn instead of a kobold? No, they're not as fun though. I like that. I I, I think of, <laughs> I think of kobolds as like we stupid things and like goblins. You know what I mean? Like they just like sitting like, <laughs> like the yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like we fuckers up to no good all the time. But no, if you enjoyed this one, I'll link down in the comments below about a bongo the kobold. It was one of the first one ones. of the first I read. I think on this yeah, time. it was one of the first ones. So it was not a very good story. So if yeah. If you enjoyed this one, you should definitely go ahead and check out that one. Um, that's all we've really got to say. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all that other good shit. Hit that notification bell and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Wash your balls. For and your butt. All those moments lost in time.